Hi everyone, this is Oscar from Underdog and today we're going to be taking this piano and we'll be turning it into this. Hi everyone, this is Oscar from Underdog, and welcome to the new camera setup. It's pretty sweet, I hope you'll agree. Um, yeah, I wanted to come at you today with two things, with uh, a little a little story, uh, a little anecdote, and then uh, a freaking production of a whole track, okay? So, first the story. The first story is um, a story of realization in my own musical journey, and... Um, Let's say there's this artist that I've been very much influenced by, or that impressed me a lot over the years, and uh, it's this techno artist, this duo, in fact, called Dense and Pika, and specifically their song called Colt, C-O-L-T. If you haven't heard it before, check it out. Freaking amazing song. Uh, it was a massive hit, and I think it's probably also responsible for catapulting them to like the forefront of techno for for quite a while. Now that song features this beautiful, beautiful piano piece, and it's it's like this 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 sort of dusty piano over these broken beats, and together it's just so kind of sparse, minimalist, euphoric, beautiful, you know. Um, and I was just I was always super intimidated by it because I was like, wow, you know, I could just imagine them finding the pianist or learning to how to play the piano themselves sitting down playing those soulful chords finding out how to record it mixing like all, everything and then finding just the right kind of beat etc etc and i was i was super impressed by them then fast forward a few years and i and i discover that in fact the entire sample the entire piano is just a sample it's just it's just lifted from a sample library. Originally, it was at like, I guess, 90 beats per minute or something. And they put it to like 125 beats per minute. And boom, suddenly they layer under a, a techno beat and voila, instant fame. And I was like, oh, no, no way, no way. What the heck? What the heck? And for a moment, I had a real like love-hate relationship with that. Because still, the production was effective. It had touched me. Right, it had touched me. It was it was a good production in pretty much every objective way. Um, I had just sort of projected onto it some kind of other merit that was probably never even the intention from the producers, right? And um, and so I had to relearn to love this song. And it's something that I that comes up a lot when people are trying to learn how to produce music is that sometimes they set themselves this kind of limitation saying i'm not a real producer yet until i've like made everything myself and while that's a great goal and that's a great way to continue to learn it might also stop you from getting things done because you might feel like you have a legitimacy issue like you're not as real as the real ones are you know um and i, I want people to get used to the fact that even the biggest of the big artists they haven't done everything themselves all the time. They've just made smart decisions. They, it's that, that thing of like work smart, not hard, right? So you shouldn't be ashamed to, I wouldn't say, I wouldn't call it take shortcuts, but you shouldn't be ashamed of, of taking the more effective route, you know? So anyway, ever since then, I've been kind of playing with this idea of sort of doing a little bit of a tribute to this dance in Pika. Um, and it just so happens that I've got this uh, wildly talented instrumentalist friend called Sad Keys. I'm going to put the, his, the link to his stuff in the description because you definitely have to check it out. Um, and Sad, he practices instrument, like playing his instruments on stream in front of the internet just for like hours at a time, like every Saturday he'll sit down and stream, live stream a couple of couple of hours worth of music making. And now he's taken to playing the piano in a piano shop and streaming that out to people. I mean, it's just, I mean, it, it touches me and I think it's really impressive. And I approached him and I said, can I, can I, can I use some of your the stuff you do? You know, can I use it? Uh, maybe just slap a techno beat under it and, um, 
and see what comes out and he was like yeah man whatever whatever inspires you uh so so uh, that's what i want to do so he he uh he sent me the recording of his last of his last performance and so that's what i want to do i want us to have a look at it i want us to find the parts that might actually work under a techno beat and then i just want to i just want to go nuts i want to use a lot of percussive things i want to use like punch box i want to use this um auto boom distortion unit for the low end i want to not use a lot of synths i don't want maybe maybe a little bit to fill up some spaces but i want it to be quite austere and efficient and dry and dusty like like the original so i suggest we're gonna hop into it and um hope you'll enjoy what comes out all right Holy moly, this is me again. I have, this is the third time I've tried to record this video. I have spent a lot of time today incorrectly recording things. Um, so uh, I'm just going to hop into this project and show you bit by bit what I've done so far, okay? So let's have a look. Okay, so first I got the recording of Sad playing and I took the most interesting parts out. I found... The, there was this one loop which sounded pretty good, so I so I warped it over it, and then I started constructing a beat, a beat, a simple beat based on a kick drum, um, a couple of kick drums, a couple of different options of kick drums, and some steppy parts, some distorted bits. So I just wanted like a kind of a gritty uh, two-bar kick drum, really, that sort of grooved, right? And I started building like a tension and release into it, and then I started workshopping. Um, all these like delays, backwards and forwards delays over the piano to kind of give it like a glitchy feel and give myself some tools to create variations because I only really had this one loop from Sad to work with. Then I started building effects like suckers, risers, uh, things like this so that I can start workshopping a little bit forward and backwards in time to start making a small break. So you'll see in a moment where I start duplicating things and I start removing the drum in one version um, so I can start creating a little climax. There we go. Um, then I spent some more time adding in effects, some subtleties, doing mixing as I go along, because I really wanted to get that part really nailed down before I started building the storytelling of the track. As you can see, then I started duplicating things and I started making a first break for a real climax. And then later on, I copied that across for a second one. I, I tried a few different things like adding hi-hats and claps because I had left those for last, which I, I kind of told myself that I was keeping myself as a, keeping it as a bit of a special weapon to increase the energy at the end. And then I noticed at the end that when I took out the main piano loop, that the glitchy part that stayed in actually sounded really good by itself. So I, I sort of doubled down on that and made it into its own section. And now I'm really just going backwards and forwards over the whole track, trying to workshop to make sure that all the moments are sort of coming in, you know, into their own. Just some final touches there. And finally, I decided to add this little bass, just just a subtle sort of a, a, a low heaviness during some of the climaxes, just to kind of fill it out. I didn't want it to become a synthetic synthesizer kind of a track. I just wanted it to be more of a subconscious feeling of bigness whenever the climax hits. Then I was paying attention to the outro, to the intro, and just finishing off some final touches with the mastering. So let's give that a listen together then, shall we? All right, this is what it is at the end.
Do you love electronic music? That's what we do at Underdog. We give classes in small classrooms online to teach you about electronic music. So for our bootcamp program, for instance, we ask you to join, even if you've got no knowledge about it, no technical knowledge, you don't know how the software works, you don't know how music theory works, whatever. You don't need to know anything because we put you in the room with a veteran producer, someone who knows what they're doing, and they can guide you along in a real classroom kind of relationship to start having fun and start expressing yourself. And by the end of the bootcamp, you'll be making tracks to be sending to your friends, to having fun, to starting to get into that world. And you'll, you'll know by then if music production is something for you. Once you join Underdog, you join a very tight, loyal community of producers who are helping each other forward, helping each other uh, succeed. That's the one of our school mottos is let's succeed together. We've also got an advanced course called the Deep Dive. That one's a bit longer and it's less about teaching and more about coaching, where it's really about let's understand what you're trying to achieve, trying to identify what's frustrating you, what's blocking you, and what you need to learn to be able to take it to the next level or to the touchdown area. Underdog is a school in Brussels. We had a lot of physical classes here in Brussels until the pandemic said that we had to kind of put a stop to that for now. So all of our classes are currently online. So that's an advantage for people who couldn't even travel to Brussels, who couldn't join us in, the, in real life. You can join us now. All of our classes are run through Zoom. Uh, those classes work surprisingly well. We were skeptical at first, but we actually think that it's a very good uh, dynamic to have people in their own software working in the background while we have the software shown on the side where you can ask questions to your teacher and get immediate feedback. So uh, sign up on our website, www.underdog.brussels. You can always contact me. My name's Oscar. Um, I'm sort of doing the managing, coordinating, and teaching some of the classes as well. My Email address is oscar at underdog.brussels. And hopefully I see you in one of the classes. All right? Take care. Peace out.